Hello everyone. This is chapter 2 of the book Connecting and Communicating Online. This chapter is all about uh, connecting on the internet, how the internet evolved, how can you connect to them, uh, to each other, uh, how can you communicate online? And uh, we will also discuss the evolution of internet. We will briefly discuss the broadband internet connections, the purpose of an IP address and its relationship to the domains and the uh, features of uh, browsers and components of web address and how can you uh, search effectively then we will explain the risks of using online social networks uses of various types of websites how websites uh, uses graphics and multimedia how email works and the rules of netiquette okay before going to the uh, evolution of internet let's discuss what internet actually is so an internet is a worldwide collection of networks that connects millions of businesses government agencies uh, you sitting at home the uh, students at universities uh, your uh, families and friends government agencies either you are at edu um, education institutions or you being an individual so internet collect uh, is uh, the that collection of networks that connects all of you together so you might have been uh, you might know about this terminology uh, long ago so uh, one of the major reasons uh, we use internet uh, we purchase computers because we pur we purchase a new smartphone because we want to uh, use the internet so internet uh, is collected is a worldwide collection of lots of networks and every network on the internet provides some resources uh, it provides you services it provides you information with the help of internet so whenever you want to uh, search uh, about anything you will definitely require a computer or a mobile device uh, and uh, internet either internet is in the form of dsl or it is in the form of uh, your 3g 4g uh, so today billions of home and business users around the world they access internet um, uh, for using wide variety of services using computers and mobile devices so this web messaging uh, is also being used commonly so you might also use some uh, you uh, you do uh, use it for emails you use it for chatting uh, sending messages to each other etc so let's see the evolution of internet okay so internet originated as arpa net in september 1969 um so this internet has its roots uh, in in a in this in a research project by this company is arpa stands for uh, advanced research projects agency it is a us uh, department of defense agency uh, and it's, it's it has two uh, major goals the first goal was that it should allow the scientists at different physical locations so that they can share information and work together and the second goal was that um it this uh, this technology or this terminology should function even if part of the network was disabled or destroyed by any disaster disaster can be any nuclear attack it can be any earthquake um natural disaster anything so that shouldn't be destroyed so that network was called as arpanet it became functional in september 1969 in start it was only to link some scientific and academic researchers across the united states and when it started it was uh, having only four nodes that is four different computers located at different parts of uh, united states of america so these four different computers they served as hosts at different places host uh, um, we discussed in first chapter about the hosts what a host is so Uh, uh that computer that you will uh, place on that location is a server or is a host the server that will provide you services and also that will provide you connections uh, to on to connect on the network so these four different hosts these four different nodes um they communicated together so these hosts they often use high speed internet to transfer data and messages over a network so by 1984 
1969 and 1969 arpanet became functional and by 1984 arpanet had uh, more than uh, 1000 individual computers that were linked together as hosts host means they were able to provide services they were able to connect to each other they were providing connections as well and nowadays we have millions and millions of hosts that are connected to the internet providing services to each other uh, which is nowadays known as internet so um uh, here comes the question who owns the internet and the answer is nobody no single person no company institution or government agencies owns the internet every organization on the internet is only responsible for maintaining their own services for maintaining their own in, on uh, services internet communication but nobody owns it um so you can only com uh, communicate it there are rules for uh, it there are standards defined uh, to uh, communicate on the internet but nobody owns it so let's see how you can connect to the internet so there are two uh, if you see at your homes there are two ways you can communicate uh, you can connect to the internet either there are uh, wired communications wired connections or you can connect wirelessly as well so users can connect their computers and mobile devices to the internet through either uh, a wired medium or a wireless medium as we all know so if you uh, connect uh, with a wired technology uh, your computer or device will be physically attached with the help of the wires the cables to that communication device that is your router uh, and then uh, you will be a router or a modem and then you will be able to transmit data or uh, you will be able to send emails you will be able to communicate over the internet uh, then uh, we have computers uh, with a communication device uh, which can uh, use a wireless modem as well that we uh, are using in our homes and universities offices these days everywhere we have a wireless modem uh, so um, computers can communicate wirelessly uh, or we can have a device that uh, that is the uh, a wireless device that will enable us to co uh, connect wirelessly with each other so wireless modem will be uh, here for us that will provide it so um, a wireless modem uh, see this is a, a, a complete picture of how you can communicate over the uh, how you can connect on the internet so this is a modem uh, through which you can connect uh, the cable one cable will be in this modem and the other cable will be in behind your pc so this cable will connect your modem to the computer and you can uh, and that modem will be connected to the internet providing you all the internet services here you can see this is a wireless modem you can plug this wireless modem into your usb port or um, uh, it can be any other uh, it is uh, or you can use a dongle uh, which is a small device that you can you use nowadays uh, for example zong has a dongle jazz has a dongle or uh, any other device it has uh, which has no wire but you have to recharge it that is a dongle and then you can uh, use it to uh, connect to the internet so um, and the wireless modem can be uh, a usb or it can be a dongle or it can be a wired um, it can be a, a, a wired modem which uh, which is connected to the to some uh, switch and then you can connect to it wirelessly so today users often connect to the internet with the help of uh, broadband services which is a high speed internet and it is always on connection in past we had no dsl and then we used the card system uh, but nowadays we, uh, the internet access is very easy because we have broadband internet services we can easily download web pages quickly and we can play online games with our friends and family or we can communicate in real time with others and much more can be done with the help of it so uh, these two mechanisms uh, wired and wireless uh, let's distinguish uh, these uh, apart from, from each other let's see how they work so uh, in a wired medium uh, we have a cable internet service or we have the dsl which is a fastest internet digital the subscriber line uh, you buy uh, the dsl you subscribe to it or then ftp that is fiber optics that is fiber to the premises ftp stands for fiber to the premises 
so this is a fiber optic uh, and then if you connect wirelessly it is a wireless uh, wi-fi stands for wireless fidelity then we have mobile broadband that is 3g 4g and then we have fixed wireless and we can also connect to each other with the help of this satellite internet service okay cable internet service provides high speed internet access through the cable television network with the help of a cable modem whereas a dsl provides you high speed uh, internet connections through telephone with the help of a dsl modem and uh, for the fiber optic uh, it uses only a fiber optic cable to provide high speed internet with the help of a modem uh, Wi-Fi uses uh, radio signals to provide high speed internet uh, and connections to the computers and devices uh, that have built in Wi-Fi capability. Your laptop has a built in Wi-Fi capability, your mobile has a built in Wi-Fi capability or you can uh, if it has no capability you can have a communication device that will enable uh, Wi-Fi connectivity to your device. Then we have mobile broadband uh, which offers high speed internet connection over cellular uh, network to communicate computers and devices that have built in uh, capability technology that is 3G, 4G and nowadays we have 5G as well or you have a fixed wireless uh, uh, wireless modem or other communication device or uh, then you have a fixed wireless mechanism which provides high speed internet connection using a dish shape antenna on a uh, placed on a building and uh, uh, then you can communicate that will communicate to a tower location with the help of the radio signals and then we have satellite uh, internet service provider uh, which provides high speed internet connections via satellite to a satellite dish placed at the buildings that will communicate with a satellite modem so these are uh, different mechanisms of connecting to um, connecting wirelessly or wired mechanisms to the internet okay this is the mechanism how you can connect at your offices and your at uh, and houses and any um, yeah, when you go out but uh, there are some public locations uh, where you can use the public internet as well uh, there are uh, free Wi-Fi hotspots uh, uh, you all might be familiar with the term uh, terminology hotspot hotspot is actually a wireless network that provides internet connections to mobile computers and devices so instead of keeping a stationary wi-fi hotspot uh, you can also create mobile hotspot through your with the help of your mobile broadband internet service you can make your phone um, um, uh, internet service provider and then you can communicate with each other with that hotspot so this hotspot is uh, let's see so this is a hotspot uh, you have uh, made your um, mobile device uh, a hotspot okay and then uh, you can connect your laptop with it uh, you can connect your tab with it and you can connect any other communication device with it uh, and, and that will serve uh, as a hotspot device and you can connect your uh, things to it so uh, for that uh, it's okay although most hotspots enable unrestricted or open access you can also restrict people uh, to it uh, you can apply passwords so that uh, not uh, everyone can access your um, uh, your hotspot uh, at public places you can see there are public hotspots uh, at any shops at airports at malls so you uh, because uh, public internets and public hotspots they are uh, risky to use and shouldn't be used um, because there are cyber criminals that um, may ha hack the, those Wi-Fi hotspots so they can gain access to uh, any communication that you are doing on the internet at that time. So we have various rules uh, so that you can uh, while using uh, if you don't have any other option and you are using a public hotspot so you should uh, al always sign out of the websites you should disable your wireless connection and also always beware of um, the financial transactions if you have to do avoid typing passwords avoid doing public uh, uh, sorry uh, banking transactions at uh, public places um, make sure your website address do, that you are using starts with an 
https so if you are using an a website that has h t t p s h t t p s so this s means that that the website you are using is a secure website um so we have a router now we have a phone we how we can can we connect to the internet so we uh, are connected to the internet with the help of the router so uh, who is providing us services so there will be an internet service provider that will provide us uh, services so internet service provider sometimes is known as an uh, internet access provider as well it is a business it is a very it is a business of the people um, that provide us the internet that will provide in us individuals the internet it will also provide internet to organizations uh, they may or may not charge a fee uh, they will charge you a fee um, if you are uh, if you are buying their services so uh, isps often charge you some money for the internet connection uh, and they will give you some plans that you will uh, this and this speed will we will provide you the speed uh, we will provide you this bandwidth these services email addresses uh, can be given by them online storage can be provided by them and so they are uh, usually uh, providing us uh, internet access um, as well as a very good bandwidth so bandwidth uh, you might have uh, heard this term bandwidth it represents the amount of data that will travel over the internet so uh, that data that is that is traveling over the internet will be in megabytes or gigabytes so um, megabytes uh, Uh, a megabyte is equal to approximately 1 million characters whereas gigabyte is approximately 1 billion characters so um, you can uh, connect to the internet uh, with the internet service provider uh, which is providing you some bandwidth jitni zyada bandwidth hogi utna zyada aapka data travel karega recall from chapter 6 jitna um, zyada uh, megabits uh, word size zyada hota hai utna zyada hamara fast data travel hote similarly jitna zyada megabits bandwidth zyada aapne buy ki hogi utna zyada data will be able to travel so uh, you can uh, use uh, higher bandwidth uh, you can use higher bandwidth to transmit more data so this data size typically in 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 the form of this megabits and giga uh, megabytes and gigabytes uh, clear Uh, so question here uh, comes that uh, can every uh, does everyone uses broadband internet so the answer may be that no uh, there are some people who do not have access to broadband internet uh, because uh, of its uh, very high cost uh, and it is not available everywhere balki um, broadband to fir bhi shayad available hai har jagah but um, in pakistan we see optic fiber internet is not available everywhere so dial up uh, is the process that we use to uh, uh, used to have uh, at our places uh, years uh, back uh, so that we can connect to the internet let's see the data usage uh, if you are only sending and receiving email messages uh, and uh, your email has no attachments that means you are using 3 to 6 m megabytes of data and if you post on online social networks that is only text so definitely uh, very less data will be used to uh, you might be using daily 25 to 50 megabytes so this is uh, these are only the statistics if you upload or download photos that will take more data if you send and receive email messages with attachment that might take up to 1 gig, uh, gigabytes if you visit web pages that uh, will be up to this if you talk to somebody um, uh, using only voice uh, conversation that will be up to this uh, this much usage if you listen to music uh, if you play online games if you watch small videos if you download apps if you talk to someone uh, using voice over internet protocol but with video that will definitely take much of your bandwidth and if you watch hd streaming videos for one to uh, one hour that will definitely take a lot of your uh, space and uh, definitely the bandwidth will be according to that